In this set of videos, we are going to be discussing the second line of defense. The second line of defense, like the first line of defense, is innate, which means it's naturally there and is also non-specific, meaning that it will not create memory. The difference between the first and second line of defense is the fact that the second line of defense is going to involve cells. So we could think of the second line of defense as being cell mediated. With the second line of defense, the special type of cells are going to be phagocytes, which are a type of leukocytes. These cells are found as part of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is one of the systems in our body that is highly involved with the immune system. So the phagocytes are going to be sampling the lymph and destroying anything foreign. In addition, it's also going to be involving our B and T cells that we'll talk about with the third line of defense. But for right now, breaking it down, we have our leukocytes, which break down into our phagocytes, and then our three phagocytes are neutrophils, macrophages, and dendritic cells. Neutrophils are the first responders. They're going to be the quickest to a site of infection, a site of damage, in order to start clearing out things. So when you think of neutrophil, think of first responders. Our macrophages, breaking down the word, phage means to eat, macro means big. This can literally be translated as big eater. Because they are the big eater, it means that they're eating the most. Macrophages are going to be the things that come in and just eat, eat, and eat. Then our last ones are the dendritic cells. Dendritic cells are going to be the professional antigen presenting cells, or APCs. These cells are going to be professionals, which means they're really good at presenting antigens, anything formed to the body, to the third line of defense. These are the cells that are going to be the best at telling the third line of defense there's something foreign, look at what it is, and help the third line of defense gain memory against any sort of potentially dangerous microbe. So these cells are going to undergo phagocytosis, which is the process of cell eating, which is what we're going to discuss next. If you need a moment to draw this picture, I recommend you pause the video and do so now. As I just mentioned, phagocytosis is the process of cell eating, and this is going to be done by phagocytes, which include your neutrophils, your macrophages, and your dendritic cells. However, for this, I'm just going to focus on a macrophage. So this is going to be my macrophage. Let's say that we have a bacteria in the body, something foreign. The bacteria, as part of its living process, is going to be releasing chemicals. And these chemicals are going to be in a gradient, so they're closer and stronger and more concentrated towards the bacteria and as they diffuse out it's less concentrated. However, the macrophage can sense these chemicals and move towards the bacteria. That movement based on chemicals is called chemotaxis. So the first step is chemotaxis. Think of a taxi. It takes you from one place to another and chemo means chemical. So these chemicals take the macrophage from one place to the bacteria or to the microbe. The macrophage is then going to attach to the bacteria with the receptor. And this 
step of attachment right here where it starts to grab onto the microbe is called adhesion. The macrophage is then going to intake the bacteria, intake the microbe. And this is going to be drawn two steps. And this process is called engulfment. So the process of the macrophage intaking the foreign microbe is engulfment. This vesicle that is inside the macrophage, this black vesicle around the microbe, is called a phagosome. There are other vesicles found inside the macrophage, and these vesicles carry dangerous chemicals. These dangerous chemicals, these vesicles of dangerous chemicals, are called lysosomes. So don't get these confused with lysozymes, which is part of the first line of defense. These are lysosomes. These are going to fuse with the phagosome. So this next step is called fusion. So the phagosome and the lysosomes are going to come together and this forms what we call a phagolysosome. This step again was called fusion. So the microbe is in here, and now the lysosome is going to be able to dump all its dangerous chemicals inside this phagolysosome. Obviously, all these dangerous chemicals are not going to be beneficial for this microbe. It's going to actually result in its death. So the last step is destruction. So there's five steps of phagocytosis. And remember, phagocytosis can be done by any of the white blood cells, so neutrophils, dendritic cells, or macrophages. There are ways that bacteria can avoid this process. So they can avoid it by, there's going to be three things, capsules, waxes, and exotoxins. And these exotoxins are called leukocytins. Leuco means white, so these are white blood cells. Cytin means to kill, so these are killing the white blood cells. So at a point when it gets engulfed, it releases things that actually kill the phagocyte before this phagolysosome can be formed that will destroy the microbe. So the capsules are sugary layers that make it slick. Waxes are going to be also a kind of effect that it can't grab. But then exotoxins, leukocytins, are going to happen once it's engulfed and then will kill the phagocyte. Our future videos are now going to talk about inflammation, fever, and interferons.